Hey guys, and welcome to our show today. Um, today we're going to go over this go-kart, which was an intern project from last summer that we kind of went over and souped up, did some upgrades to. Um, and of course, after that, we're going to drive it around. We've got a sweet slalom course set up, um, so that should just be a ton of fun. In addition to that today, we also have a really cool giveaway. Um, we're gonna give away a U-Channel bundle. If you have a preference between 1120 or 1121 low side, um, you can definitely specify that, but otherwise we'll kind of default to full channel. So that'll be a lot of fun. If you wanna be entered to win that, make sure you're following and you type the keyword drift into the chat. Um, and with that, I think we'll kind of get started and talk a little about this project. So um, I'm sure you guys saw some on social media, some clips of this driving around outside. Um, it really was a lot of fun to put together and do drive, and it is a ton of fun to drive. So this kind of started as um, an intern project from last summer. Oftentimes we have our interns kind of do some really, um, some larger builds, some builds that use GoBuilda in ways that we don't traditionally um, in order to kind of push the limits and find some different ways we can use parts and find different parts that we may need to add to the system. So th that was one of the big um, driving forces behind this. And since then, we've got some new parts that were um, developed for applications similar to this. And um, we kind of took some time, made it a little beefier, made it a lot faster, and put some slick tires on the back. So um, we can kind of start with the powertrain here. Um, over in the back, we have our two batteries. That will be the first thing you'll probably notice. Um, they are two uh, lithium polymer batteries, LiPo batteries, um, and they are five amp hour. Now the big reason we use these in projects like this is that they have a really high um, energy density. Um, you can put uh, just a ton of capacity in a really small space. Um, and they also just have a crazy high discharge current. Now for this um, specifically, that doesn't matter a whole lot because these tires are so slick they're great for drifting and it means they don't pull that much power but when you take these off and you have some really good grip um, you can pull crazy amounts of current um, outside even with these on we could pull 145 amp amps out of these motors so that's why you really want to get those really high discharge batteries um, so that is kind of the the battery system, um, those batteries, there are two um, run in series, uh, excuse me, they run in parallel. So you double our capacity. So we've got a total of 10 amp hours of power here. Um, and in theory, we could pull a maximum of like 1400 amps at burst. Um, we won't get anywhere close to that today. But um, potentially on a future show, we may do a show on, you know, removing these and just trying to go crazy fast. So those both power two Castle Creations, um, one fifth scale ESCs. Um, these are really crazy motor controllers. They can handle like 200 amps each. Um, and those are brushless motor controllers. And those will feed into these one tenth scale Castle brushless motors that are not super easy to see back behind um, this structural channel here. Um, and these can both peak at a total, you know, hypothetical power output of about 10 horsepower. So we can, in theory, pull 20 horsepower out of these two motors. Um, again, with some, you know, more grip on the tires and going from there. But um, these motor controllers really are pretty awesome. Um, they give us a lot of programmability options also. So I'm sure you'll notice um, when we start driving around, when I want to slow down, they have kind of a... A funky sound they make when they break, um, but they let us go reverse, they let us break and have a lot of fine control over things like throttle curves and stuff like that. These have, um, for you guys who aren't super familiar, they're a three wire motor and that's because they are brushless. So um, brushless motors are going to be oftentimes um, more efficient and a lot of times you can get really, really high output out of brushless motors because they are, um, you know, cogging a commutator around using magnets, um, electromagnets specifically, you can just put a ton of power into that system and they can run really, really fast without a lot of efficiency loss um, that 
may come from a, a brushed motor where you have contact running around that. So these motors, I believe, will peak at about 30,000 RPM, um, which is why we've got to have such a complex kind of reduction here. Um, let's, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, not t totally sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. So in the chat, somebody asked if we can filter out giveaway messages. That's something that would be awesome. Um, and definitely something we can look at doing for the future. Um, so definitely thanks for that suggestion. So, um, with a 30,000 RPM motor, um, a reduction on that is going to be really important. So this is geared for about 20 miles an hour on this size tire, which means we need just about a 20 to one reduction. Um, in this case specifically, we've got a, tw let's see, um, a 20 tooth gear and a 100 tooth gear um, with a spur gear reduction. We'll see if we can, yeah. Let's use this to kind of show you guys a little bit of that. So um, here you've got a, 20 tooth and a hundred tooth gear. So that gives you your five to one. Um, whew, that is driving a shaft that is um, also has a 10 tooth sprocket on that. Sorry about that guys. Um, that also has a 10 tooth sprocket on that and that's driving a 42 tooth sprocket. So we've got, you know, just over a 20 to one reduction there um, between those gear and chain setups. And we've got that mirrored over here so we've got that same gear ratio between both these back tires and an independent rear axle setup. Um, traditionally, you know, that's not as great for drifting, but here, because these tires are just so slick, it works out really, really great. And these gears have been holding up great. They actually have some grease on them, so they've been running really, really smooth. Um, and that kind of explains a little bit of the color that you guys can see on them. Um, and this chain ended up being really nicely tensioned. Uh, here you can see the motor. It's got a really big cooling fan strapped on the back, which for this specific application is pretty unnecessary, but really, really large motors um, with really beefy EFCs. And there's our battery setup right there. With that, we can talk a little bit about the steering setup. So that is kind of a more conventional Ackerman style steering um, where you've got a steering wheel that will turn some wheels. So um, we can kind of show you guys a little bit of how that works here as well. Basically, um, you've got a steering wheel that is affixed to a go tube and that go tube is supported on some bearings, runs through the length of this shaft with a universal joint, lets us um, rotate those two axes independent, not independently, connect those and put them at a pretty funky angle. Um, and that's driving a a lever arm that has two universal joints and threaded rods that will actually rotate those wheels. Now the construction of this chassis, um, I'm sure you've noticed, has a lot of boxed U-channel. Um, and now this is a, a method of construction we use a lot for our heavier duty, um, really large scale projects. And it can kind of emulate a two inch by four inch, you know, um, box channel. Um, and using some threaded plates and standoffs, you can um, mount these two full U-channels back to back and really get a ton of strength out of them. Um, and they really are much stronger. Um, this frame is, could more than support the amount of weight that we have on it and really um, does a really fantastic job. The only kind of downside is once you assemble it, it's tough to add additional parts. Um, you have to be kind of clever in there to um, add additional screws, add nuts and stuff like that. So it's kind of tough to build up on it after you've started, but it is really, really strong and it is overall pretty lightweight. Um, this go-kart is fairly light and you know you can move it around with one person. So that really kind of speaks to the overall very aluminum construction. Now, of course, there are some non-go build parts. Those kind of just make sense when you're working at this scale. So stuff like large tires, a steering wheel, and a seat that don't make a lot of sense for your FTC robot, but for something like this, you would definitely need. Um, and then we've got this gimbal set up for our phone so we can show some first person view of it driving around here in a little bit. Oh man, people are talking a lot about drive trains in the chat, which you know makes sense. Um, Omni wheels would be really cool. 
So they would probably, you know, give a very different uh, approach to drifting. Something that I've seen some people use more in competition robotics. More in that kind of realm is a four-wheel drive with four independent motors and omni wheels that are all facing the same direction. So that doesn't give you the ability to strafe like an X-Drive um, where you've got your wheels at 45 degrees would, but it lets you change the center of rotation of your chassis. So if you say um, have four independent omni wheels, you can drive for just the front two and push your center of rotation way further toward the front of your chassis, swing your back way around. Um, for some scoring elements that can help a lot and the ability to rotate that center of rotation, uh, shift that center of rotation can be really cool for some robots. Maybe not the most competitive FTC thing, but I think it's really neat. Uh, is there a CAD assembly for the go-kart? I think there was some of it that was done in CAD. Um, a lot of the upgrades and stuff were more free-built where um, it's more about finding out how things are assembled and fit together in real life and saves us a little bit of time compared to going out and modeling a whole motor in ESC to see how they fit in this system. Um, let's see here. FTC Mario Kart game. That's something we've talked about. I think it would be so sweet um, to build up some more of these and, you know, race around and throw turtle shells at each other and stuff like that. Um, not assembling things in CAD. Uh, I think that the one of the biggest advantages of working with um, parts that you know we sell in GoBuilda in CAD is finding out what you need to order. Uh, of course, that doesn't apply as much to us, so we kind of have the ability to run and grab any part um, that we sell and bolt it on, see how it fits. So, you know, it makes a lot of sense for some different workflows. It makes um, a lot of sense for some applications. It is a long U channel, I believe. This is the 1200 millimeter U channel. Um, so it's just two back to back as the longest lengths we sell. Um, and then the widths are, you know, a lot more reasonable. This chassis really isn't super wide compared to how long it is. I can kind of show you guys, oops, a little bit of that width. It's probably about four, you know, three and a half or four feet long. I'll set that down here. Uh, Um, something that would be, you know, cool to explore a little bit more on this as well is steering geometry. So, um, if you've not worked with Acrim and steering very much before, it can be a surprisingly complex topic. Um, because you've got two wheels, um, and you're trying to get your whole chassis to turn around a single center point, you've got to rotate these two wheels a different amount. Um, say if you're trying to rotate to the right, um, where your center of rotation is somewhere around here, you want both those wheels to be facing toward the same center of rotation so that they can both be engaged with the ground properly um, and get the most grip possible. Um, on, you know, that's a very simple way to look at it and there are absolutely cases where you want to break that rule. Um, that general rule is called Ackerman steering um, and Ackerman steering geometry. Sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want a little bit of the opposite effect to increase grip in some situations. So there are lots of ways to use that and lots of ways to modify it. Um, here we have a very simple setup because we're not trying to go 70 miles an hour. It's not that important to get that perfect. Um, so here we have more of a simple, you know, something that works and it works pretty well approach and something we can look at doing more and looking at more in depth in the future on potentially another stream on more of the engineering side of a, of a chassis like this. Um, with that, I think we can definitely, you know, grab this, um, put it on the ground and do some driving around. I think that makes sense. So right now we're gonna play a quick little clip for you guys. We're gonna get all set up and um, we'll be right back in just a little bit.
All right, so um, we've got that all on the ground. We moved our table out of the way. So your primary camera will be our point of view camera on the cart. Um, and you can kind of see our, our stone-based slalom course in the background. And we'll go ahead and plug in all of our electronics. Okay, well, we're looking pretty good. And these are fairly loud, so I apologize. Um, this system is fairly fast, so we definitely won't be able to get up to full speed in the amount of distance we have here. Um, we have, you know, probably 25 or 30 feet, um, and this can go up to close to 20 miles an hour. So that's definitely a tough thing. We won't be able to get as fast as we can, but we can give it a shot and see, you know, how much speed we've got. So in an amount of runtime like this, our biggest limitation is really just the amount of grip that we have. Um, we don't have very much grip, very much on purpose here. So we can't get up to full speed in, in a space like this. But you know that can work to our advantage once we start you know, being able to play with the drifting aspect of this. So we'll go ahead and give this a shot. Um, the toughest part is just keeping control um, where you're not spinning out and you don't horribly overdrift a, a corner so Exactly like that. Amanda asked if anyone wants me to barrel through the stacks. Uh, we can definitely do one. We'll give it a shot. Definitely only have two left. <laughs> oh man. Stone gets stuck in the throttle. Oh yeah, that's not something I have talked about yet. So um, the throttle situation here, um, we're using a um, RC, um, very similar to an RC car style of setup, where the only thing right now we're, we're using is this um, throttle channel. So my steering is very mechanical, very direct link, and it's the throttle channel that we're using to control the motors. Um, something like pedals would be cool too in the future, so that may be something we look at. Um, again, do it on a future stream or we can kind of dive into a little bit more of some different ways you could control this. 
Um, you can definitely do something like a thumb pedal or a thumb trigger to, to do your throttle setup. Um, the big nice part of this is you get throttle and your brake or reverse on the same the same um, potentiometer that's run by your same one finger. So that's nice. Um, and really, this isn't too inconvenient. Um, it's not a very heavy steering setup, so you can absolutely run it with one hand. Um, we'll do, you know, we'll try to see how fast we can get this to go. Um, be a little more daring, potentially. So um, I'm not having a great time catching up in the chat. So if you guys, you know, say something and I don't quite notice, um, definitely feel free to say it again. Um, I can pull that up here on my phone to see what you guys are talking about. But this is a whole lot of fun, really. Um, it's really hard to be being able to drift around and, and go through corners really, really quickly. So that's a whole lot of fun. Um, here, it isn't crazy fast. Um, and that's just like we've said. You can't get up to full speed, um, and you can't go quite as fast as you'd like to. Um, I can spin the tires through this whole, you know, kind of course um, without any problem at all. So that part can be kind of tough, but it is still pretty darn fun. Um, with the amount of current we're pulling, uh, we can actually check that here. Um, We've still got, you know, a crazy amount of runtime on these batteries, like I mentioned, 10 amp hours, and our peak so far has been 30 amps. So even if we ran at peak the whole time, we're still getting a really pretty solid amount of runtime on these batteries, um, and we're definitely not running at peak the whole time. Um, it's still a lot of fun. I guess my gimbal decided to stay facing in one direction. That's not what you're supposed to do. There we go. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, I suppose we can talk about the giveaway a little bit more. Um, so the giveaway is some 11 as an 11 20 series u channel bundle of course if you'd prefer some low side u channel definitely let us know um, if you end up winning um, our standard procedure for winning is if you end up being chosen as the winner in the chat 
shoot us an email um, over at marketinggoodbuilder.com. Let them know you've won um, and give them your team number, shipping address, Twitch username, all that good stuff. Um, make sure you're following, of course, and if you, um, yeah, you only make sure you put your you, that keyword in the chat. Number of times you put it in the chat doesn't matter, um, just that you have it in the chat at all. Um, is it, if there's anything else you guys want to see on this setup, um, let me know. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, otherwise, if we potentially want to look at the secondary camera, we'll just do a quick speed run, see how fast we can kind of show you guys we can, how fast we can get it to go in here. Hit the light. I think we've definitely confused the phone gimbal with that one. Um, but we'll go ahead and roll for our giveaway. Um, I didn't totally think this through and put my laptop away. So I'll pull, up, pull it up on my phone and we will go ahead and roll for our giveaway. Um, you guys probably have to bear with me for just a minute while I log in and do all this good stuff. So um, if you have any questions, put them in the chat. Um, or if you've got any other questions about it, want to see, you know, close up stuff like that, um, or any other questions about the rest of GoBuilda, feel free to, you know, always shoot us a video or shoot us an email. Um, tech at GoBuilda.com is how you reach us. Um, and that's going to be the best way. You also can always call in, um, uh, our phone number is on the website. I don't totally remember it off the top of my head quite yet, but, um, that's a great way to reach us and you can ask for tech or ask for Ethan. Um, and a lot of things we can help you out over the phone too. All right, looks like we are about here. Um, we'll go ahead and close the giveaway um, and pick our winner. It looks like Lego Cam is our winner for the today's U Channel bundle. So, like I mentioned earlier, shoot us an email to marketingyoubuilder.com um, and we will get you that sent out, include all that good stuff so we can do that. Um, and we will get you your U Channel. Uh, Dansman805 says, Ethan, I appreciate you get for hurting stones. Um, I think so too, I guess. Uh, I also would probably get control called for controlling. Uh, that's a lot of stones. Um, but they're a great, great big Lego piece for something like this. It's really, they're a lot of fun. Um, let's see, somebody asked about the motors. Yeah, what are the drive motors? Um, we can definitely look at those here quick. Um, so they are at Castle Creations 2028. Um, they are uh, peak at about 10 horsepower. In this application, um, they're get pulling nothing near that. Uh, it looks like our peak was 528 watts of um, electrical power. So that was the most power we pulled. Um, really, they wouldn't end up anywhere near that much um, in actual, you know, uh, applications like this. Here's a kind of a close-up of them. They are um, much larger, which means they can, of course, put out a lot more torque. Um, that magnet, you know, gets a lot better um, kind of mechanical advantage on the internal commutator to be able to put out a lot of torque. This is their uh, speed control. Uh, it's pulled in from our two lithium batteries. Um, and, you know, we have this little monitor to be able to make sure we're above the minimum voltage for our battery packs. That's really a really fast way to um, kill batteries and kind of keep an eye on what we're pulling, uh, see how much current and um, be able to continue to evaluate, make sure we're running those in a safe kind of setup there. Um, herding, uh, well rather herding is a type of controlling. Yeah. 
I suppose that's true. Um, with that, I suppose that's about um, what we've got for you today. If you guys want to see more content about the go-kart, um, shoot us an email, mention us on Discord. Um, the video you saw earlier in the stream is up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So if you want to show your friends and family before they go and watch this whole stream, um, feel free to send them that way for some footage of this drift cart. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned earlier, if you've got any questions for us, shoot us an email. Um, I'm also over on Discord a lot, so if you're on the FTC Discord, that's a great place to reach me. And um, we may do some future shows on this go-kart in the future. It really is a lot of fun, and hopefully we'll be able to continue to um, show off stuff like this in the future. So, hope you guys have a good week, and um, oh yeah, we will be um, closed for Memorial Day on Monday. So, if you order something this weekend, it'll get shipped out on Tuesday most likely instead of Monday. Um, so, we'll see you guys on Tuesday. For GoBuild TV, we'll see you in a couple weeks, and hope you have a great weekend. See you guys.